Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to change the radio in your RC model. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to show you how to change the radio in an RC model. If this is your first time joining us, I really hope that this benefits you in some way. If you're returning for another video, I really appreciate you stopping by and having a look. Well, the tools we're going to need for this change out, we're going to need a 2mm Allen wrench. I like using these power drivers here. If you've never seen this tool before, this is pretty cool. If you push the button down, you're not going to get any motion out of the tool at all. It just vibrates. As you rotate the tool, the tool begins to respond and um, it helps you loosen and tighten your screws. Now keep in mind that tools like this will strip out threads, so you always want to use this with caution. And I do always recommend hand tightening your screws so that you don't pull those threads out. The next tool that we're going to need is a receiver and a bind plug. Now the bind plug is used to put the receiver into bind mode so that it can pair properly with the transmitter. The next tool that we're going to need is, of course, a transmitter. This is the DX5R, but this process will work for all of the DX radios, um, including the DX5R, the DX5C, the DX5 Rugged. So all of those will work for this process. The next tool we'll need is some instructions on calibrating our speed controller. Anytime that we change out the radio in an RC mono, we have to recalibrate the speed controller. This is going to be teaching the speed controller what full throttle, full reverse, and neutral positions are so that it will function properly. So our first step in our arm of granite here is to remove the receiver box cover. So the receiver box cover is held down by the mount screws on the speed controller. So there's one located up top, there's one located on the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove those screws. Once those screws are out of the way, we can lift all these wires up and expose the receiver in the inside. Now you can install the bind plug in this receiver and flip on the speed controller in order to bind up the uh, receiver to the transmitter. I actually like using a bench test tool instead. I find that this is a little bit easier uh, to have everything kind of out in the open. And that way, if your bind does fail, you don't have to be fishing around a bunch of wires trying to make all of this work. This bench test device has uh, equipment in here that is known to be good. So it has a receiver, a servo, a battery pack, a motor, and a speed controller. For this process, we're just going to be using the battery pack that's located on our test box. Normally, we would plug the bind plug into this receiver, but this receiver doesn't have a bind slot. Instead, it uses a button that's located just here in front of my finger. You can see the outline of the button. So we're going to hold this button down and we're going to plug the battery into the receiver. And you'll notice that light begins blinking. So that, re that receiver is now into bind mode. This would work the same way as if we plug the bind plug in and hit the button. You'd still see that blinking light. Now we're going to go to our transmitter before we do binding and uh, power this on here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this receiver is in a model that's ready to accept the new vehicle. The last thing you want to do is bind up a receiver into an existing model and screw up that model memory. So we'll push the roller in and roll down to bind. And 22 milliseconds is just fine for most applications. Now I'm just rolling down to highlight bind. Now you'll notice this says put receiver into bind mode, then select bind. So always put your receiver into bind mode first. So we'll do that again. Hold this button down. Plug in the power. Get a blinking light. Now we're going to push in the roller and begin the binding process. And this is usually pretty quick. Once the model resets, then you have an, a successful bind to the receiver. Now having the receiver here, you see that blinking light is no longer blinking. And just as a test to make sure that things are working properly, you can see we have steering.
and we have throttle. So you can see why I like to bind this up separate of the vehicle, because that's a whole lot easier to double check for errors. So the next thing that we're going to do is just unplug things from our existing receiver and plug them into the new one. So we will unplug the throttle first and plug it in. Now, if you'll notice how this is set up, see how the receiver is upside down here? You want to make sure that your signal wire points toward the length of your, of your receiver. So plugging this into the throttle slot. Unplugging the, oh, I'm sorry. That's the steering, not the throttle. Make sure you plug these in the right slots. Unplugging the throttle, plugging it into this slot. Now you'll notice that this last connector is plugged into auxiliary in this current receiver. That last connector is your fan, and this will do just fine in the battery slot. Now that that's all hooked up, we can do our throttle range calibrations. Referring back to our instructions here, this is going to tell you to, um, to um, press this set button and switch on the switch. So the set button is located in switch A, your switch is switch B, um, and so you're going to hold that button down while you power on the switch. The speed controller will beep at you, and then you're going to, in the neutral position, press the button. In the full throttle position, press the button. And in the full reverse position, press the button. So we'll go over that steps now. So we will start by holding down this little button, powering on the speed controller. So that beeping is, is searching for your neutral position. So we'll push the button. Then we will give full throttle and push the button. And full reverse and push the button. Then we can power off the system and power on the system and your throttle range is now calibrated. So now let's look at the steering positions because we do need to do some things with that for endpoint adjustments. So now having the vehicle in this position, you notice that as we turn the steering, our steering is responding and you see we have a pretty good turning radius there. But if we go into our radio menu here, we can see that they, we have some adjustments with, that we can play with. So if we go down to servo setup, push the roller in, we can see we have a travel adjustment. So there's one for steering located here. Now if we turn, you can see it's going to adjust one side or the other. So this is where it's important to kind of play with these settings a little bit. Because you can notice that I can turn the steering and start running up this value. And you see the steering is actually increasing as I change the value. So that tells us that we can do a little adjustment, get, the, get more steering angle here. The idea is to adjust this up to the point that the steering will respond as soon as we let go of the steering. So you see I'm just barely turning the steering and that steering is still responding. So we'll just adjust up until that goes away. So that's right about our threshold, right there, because we're just seeing a little movement and adjustment. So we'll do the same thing for the other side. So we'll turn this way and slowly increase our values until the steering is going to respond as soon as we let go of the steering. So right there, we're a little bit too high. So we'll just adjust down until the steering starts to respond. And one thing to note about this is, is that if you trim your steering in one direction or the other, you really should come back and readjust this endpoint. Properly adjusting your endpoints will make your servos last longer because your servo always has more deflection than your steering does. And that's why it's important for you to adjust that endpoint whenever you upgrade your radio. Now, since all of that is finished, we're gonna pop out this receiver that's in here. So we just used the little two millimeter Allen wrench that we had from before. So we'll just kind of wedge underneath a little and pop that receiver out. And we will replace our new receiver in the box. Now, if you've done this well, you won't need to replace the um, double-sided tape that's in the inside. If you haven't, that of course will be something you'll need to replace. And once that is done, you need to route all of these wires 
through this waterproof seal that's right here. So you see this red seal. Now this is kind of difficult to do and I've struggled with this numerous times trying to get this on camera. So I may end up going off camera to um, fish all those wires through there. We'll see what happens. I have found that if we use our Allen wrench as kind of a push tool on this side, because our finger's a little too big to get down in there, uh, using this to kind of push will, will help you get things lined up and get the door closed without pinching your wires. All right, that wasn't too bad. So now we've got our wires all situated in here and we can close up this receiver box. Now, since this box isn't closing very well, that means that there is some wires that are still in the way and it happens to be that guy right there. Just like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, always hand tighten these screws. Don't let the driver do it for you. Okay, now that that is finished, we'll just give this a quick little test here. So we'll pull the trigger. So we have throttle, we have brakes, and we have reverse. We have left and we have right. And that replacement is now finished. Well guys, as you can see, that was an easy process. I'll put the completion time somewhere about here. Well, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope that you have enjoyed or benefited from what you've seen here. If you have, consider giving me a thumbs up, a subscription, and don't forget to hit that bell. I mention this in all my videos. If you're not hitting the bell, you're not getting notifications when new videos go up. So go back and do that for all of your subscriptions if you want to get notifications. Well, that's gonna do it, and I hope to see you in the next one.